The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 212. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on. You know, she's a woman with many talents. She's a musician, a model, and an MC, and I'm just excited to have her on and share her story. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Jennifer Zhang. Jennifer, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more by yourself to our listeners. Hi, I'm very glad to be on the show. I am, as you said, a musician, model, and MC. So I was the 2015 Miss Friendship Ambassador of Chicago. So I represented my city, Chicago, to compete in the Miss Chinese International pageant in Hong Kong last year. And I play a variety of instruments such as Chinese flute, Chinese zither, and the piano. I'm also a singer, so I write and produce my own music. I released my single, Foam in the Ocean, which is in Mandarin last year, to very positive reviews and lots of hits. And I've performed all over the world yeah, and I'm also a news anchor and show host WNDZ 750 AM, and I am the director for Suncast. Well, I'm the director for Ecast Media Group based in Chicago. I've done a lot of shows, channels such as MTV, Style Network, NBC, CMT, and Chinese TV stations such as CCTV, Shanghai TV stations. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing all that. That's quite, you know, an accomplishment. And Jennifer, what's your cultural background? Well, I was born and raised in Shanghai until 18 years old, and I came to Northwestern for school. So I am 100% Chinese, but I live in Chicago right now. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. I love Chicago. It's a great city. And they also have Garrett's Popcorn, which is like my favorite in Chicago. Oh, yeah. I know a couple (laughs) people there, actually. Awesome. It's lovely. So what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? My favorite self-confidence quote actually is the quote that my professor told me, my flute professor, uh, who's the professor at Central Conservatory Music. She said, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. I love it. And you know, that's such that's so true, because so many people feel like they need the right things to start when really you just have to start. And I think everything, you know, just falls into place just comes out naturally. Because if if you don't start, how do you expect to get to where you are today? Or, you know, attain your goals and dreams and, you know, go out there and live your life. So yeah, yeah. because I heard actually, the hardest thing is to step the first step, you know, like the later on, it probably become easier but I think a lot of people are caught in the thought that well like you know it's going to be a huge task and you know what if I fail and what if it's not perfect what if and what if so like I think the most important thing is actually just to get started and then be better at it and better at it and better at it and then eventually you will be great you know then you will be there but I think the first step is always really important and just gotta believe in ourselves and take the first step. Awesome. So true. And thanks for sharing that. And in your own words, how would you define self-confidence? I think it's just like believing yourself, you know, finding your passion and turning the, um, you know, the obstacles into something like a challenge. So like kind of challenge yourself and better yourself and keep on developing talents and becoming who actually you want to become. That 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 is actually my motto of life. <laughs> Awesome. And I love that definition. It's true. It's just always, you know, going after what you want, getting better each day. And, you know, that's how you get to where you want to be. So thanks. Thanks for sharing that. And what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? Well, because I was born and raised in Shanghai. So it was, you know, the Eastern culture. I was actually a pretty quiet and shy person back in school because there was a lot of pressure like academically being in actually I went to a really good you know middle school and high school and all that so like the academic excellence was like really stressed and um, so I was really good at taking tests and everything but I never was like you know my own sort of self like I try to be but I feel like there's a lot of like pressure around me to be like someone that is expected of my family or like my my community or my surroundings so I never had a chance to sort of release like the creative side of me 
So actually, although I practiced instruments for like a long time, actually, because my parents never wanted me to be a musician. They're like, um, you know, um, you got to because, you know, my my fa- my family uh, does business and stuff so like you got to like, you know, pursue what the family is doing and just don't do whatever that is like a waste of time. So actually, I always had to suppress that in me. But now being in America, like I could actually have the freedom and the why well, I say the luxury of pursuing actually different aspects of um, the beauty of life. Yeah, so that's actually the later part of the question. But before that, I was very shy. I don't really talk that much. And I kind of obey the orders of my family and my school, my teachers and kind of like yield to the peer pressure sort of sort of type of girl. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And you know, it's something that most Asian women deal with, right? Being pressured by the family to be somebody somebody they want to you know to mold into even though it's not our true selves and because of that sometimes we feel trapped you know we don't want to stand out we don't want to say anything because we're afraid we might um, let our parents down let society down or let you know people around us down so you know what was that aha moment in your life when you realize you know you can be you go out there and be the creative person you wanted to be the be the musician that you are today i actually wanted to do music or uh you know other kind of more creative things when I was applying to college but my mom was like oh you gotta do you know like math or like science so I actually was an engineering major so I got to Northwestern and so you know like now I was by myself I guess it was like a gradual change but like there was one time that like because you know it's like new student week and so I kind of mingled with a group of uh, new friends right and so it was at lunchtime so I went to come like I went to find them but Somehow I like mistaken another group of people as my new friends. So I sat down with them without actually knowing any of them. And I started talking and it went, wow, it was really weird. Like I was like, and then after like five minutes, I realized they were not like the same group of friends that I had known. With. <laughs> like, you know, it was just me- like, it, it's all messed up. But <laughs> I realized like people are really open and just like positive and encouraging most of the time, you know, to others. So I kind of like opened my mind um, a lot and you know it was kind of empowering in a way that like how nice and how receiving people were and from now on I just kind of like I think it was the education you know I also did my degree in Kellogg and the slogan for Kellogg is to like think bravely so I think that's how I was like kind of like re-educated in college that like I should embrace myself and identity and think bravely and you know do what I want and be free and be happy that's awesome. And you know, it's it's great. You know, sometimes we just plop ourselves into a group, not consciously of where like what goes on. And then after you're like, Oh, my God, I, I don't know these people, but they took <laughs> took you, you know, with open arms, you know, and, exactly. and I think we forget that there are great people out there who are just willing to accept you and receive you for who you are. And, um, exactly. you know, because of that turning point, what's your life been like now? I feel a lot happier. I think like L- L- Lana Del Rey actually said, you know, doing what you love is freedom. Loving what you do is happiness. So um, right now I'm doing a lot of things that, that I didn't dare doing. Um, and I'm like experimenting a lot of different areas in my life. And I, I just feel more expressive and creative as a person. And doing music allows me to be that way. So and also I wrote like songs that kind of, celebrates my and identity and sort of like is like a memory of what I've experienced so you know in life there's a lot of um sadness and sometimes like bad things that would happen to a person but I think like being able to turn that into something that is shareable among other people and being able to resonate the same feeling among other people. I think that is some of the greatest things that I as a person could do. And I'm happy to be able to do that through music, you know, and also contributing to the community because I was actually had the honor to represent Chicago as Miss Friendship Ambassador. So I actually did a lot for the community and I went to so many like the senior citizens homes or like schools and stuff so I was really happy to kind of see how other people were experiencing in their life and seeing their suffrage and seeing their happiness and kind of made me a fuller and a better person that I think kind of gained more appreciation of uh, where I am in life and uh, what I might become later on in my life so that is all very good. 
That's awesome. I'm glad you're able to, you know, go out there and do what you love and be the creative person that you were meant to be. And uh, Jennifer, you know, if our listeners are listening to your episode, they may be in a similar situation. What would be that one like self-confidence tip you would tell them? I think first of all is staying true to yourself. You are a unique person, you know, a very special gift in this world. So you yourself is probably the best thing that you can find to yourself. So I think the first thing is to be true and be who you are. And the second thing is to find your passion and get started with it. I think it's never too late to start. I've got a friend who is wanting to be a dancer when she's like almost 30 and everyone was like, that's impossible. So she just like quit like all the other things like social networking she's doing and she went to classes and now she is a dance teacher in our school. So, you know, I think everything is possible if you set your mind to it and doing something you love is so important because um, it just gives you like endless drive to do what you do. Like I think there's a saying that says if you do things you love, then you don't have to work a day in your life, uh, which is like kind of true, but you still have to expect a lot of hard work. You know, and nothing comes for free, but it's just a lot easier because you don't feel like uh, you're pressured to do something, but it's like what you want to do. So it's a different feeling, you know, coming from when I was doing the test, like learning all of them, you know, like that. I mean, I love school, but it's like, you know, I wasn't doing what I wanted to do. Like a lot of things didn't apply to my life, but now I'm doing what I really care about. I, I feel like I feel so passionate. I feel like really happy. And, you know, I think I've kind of found myself in a place that I'm very happy right now. So um, I think that's another thing really important. And I think that once you kind of stay true to yourself and your passion, start kind of working on it, then you will be on the road to a lot of greatness and happiness and, of course, confidence. Thanks for those tips. Those were all great. And, you know, Jennifer, if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yeah, you can find me on my website. It's just my name, www.jenniferzane.com. And you can find me on Facebook, follow me on YouTube, or add me on Twitter, WeChat, Weibo, Instagram, <laughs> all kinds of things. Thanks, Jennifer. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with her, you can also head on over to the TaoSelfConfidence.com and search for Jennifer's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else we talked about. And I just want to thank Jennifer for taking the time to share her story with us. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Sheena. It's been a pleasure. It was an honor to have you on. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll catch you soon. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of The Tao of Self-Confidence. Visit our website at thetowelofselfconfidence.com to check out cool resources, blog articles, show recaps, and so much more. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.